This is a filler project while I keep working on the quick change gearbox. So I've been long overdue for upgrading my camera boom. In a few previous videos you might notice the camera bouncing or at some weird tilt angle. It's the limitations of what I'm working with. I'll show you. That's you guys. At this end we have the fancy elastomer retaining clip. And basically the phone just sits in a groove. It's a little bit crappy. As you can imagine over this distance, she bounces a bit. This has been really great to get shots behind the lathe and basically get the tripod out of my way. So this is one example of a typical setup that I might have. This camera boom is actually down at an angle. The other issue is that this all needs to be pointing directly at the work. If I want to side on shot, I can't get it with this setup. The other sort of shot that's difficult to get is on the mill. Quite often I'm cranking with my arm down an angle just to clear the boom. I'll pull out all the stops for you guys. And again, I often have an angle boom while working at the bench just to, so I've got room. So there's some issues. The number one problem for me is no swivel on the end. When this screw is tightened against this taper, it drives this forward and drives the cup into the ball, locking it all in place. Let's just add some sliding appearance because this will probably shrink. Paper's not flammable, right? Hmm, a little bit of draw filing. It fits. So now we just need a locking mechanism. One thing with this locking screw, the tip can't be conductive. Anything conductive that touches the screen will actually read as a touch. All right, this is what I'm gonna use. Just add a couple of strips of plastic here. Thanks for what? I forgot about this guy. <laughs> right, let's see what new cinematic shots we can get and new camera angles.
Let's discuss beam deflection. If I take a weight, say a bone, and put it on here, now that's going to cause this to deflect, to bend, to move. Or if I have this span, there is a lot more movement out here, and that can happen. For a cantilevered beam like this, the effect of the length is cubed. If I double this distance, it's actually eight times greater out here. Increase the length a little bit, huge difference. We can change this to make it a lot more stiff. Really, the stiffness comes down to two properties, the material and the geometry of it. I could use a great big steel bar like this, but that would be highly impractical. But what we can do is have a more efficient shape, like a tube. So the geometric property we're chasing is second moment of area. If you take the neutral axis, that's the center point about which it bends, it's the distribution of this section, the further away from that axis it is, the stronger. If I have a ruler, I can bend it fairly easily, but if I actually turn it the other way, this becomes a lot more stiff in this direction. The distribution is pretty much on the center line. The more material you can get further away from that center line, the better. Turning it moves more of the material further away. The other thing we can change is the material choice. We're after a property called Young's modulus, the elastic modulus, the mod. Wood is quite low and I'd like to get away from it. Steel, you're talking 200. Aluminium, I think 76. That means if I take a tube of the same size, the aluminium will deflect a bit over twice as much. The aluminium is gonna be lighter, easier to handle, but the most important feature of this aluminium is I have enough to make the boom. Steel I don't. Alley it is. Oh, and this slim edition, not coming out until next year. Sorry guys.